that, I can start us off. You, sir? I saw all these swan birds in the cast list. Are you relation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, my, well, my last name is Swanberg. I'm related to a few Swanbergs. Are there any specific Swanbergs you were asking? Wanted to know no, about. I just wondered which characters they played. Okay. Um, yeah, my husband, Joe Swanberg, who's also a filmmaker that some people might be familiar with, uh, plays her husband in the film. And um, my son is the baby, Judith Swanberg. That's my real life baby. Um, and uh, that, that land in Montana um, belongs to my husband's family. His great grandfather, great great grandfather, homesteaded there. And his Grandfather was born in that cabin, and his dad grew up around there. So, yeah. So that's why I sort of knew that existed and, and wanted to do something in that location. Yeah. Um, with a couple questions, uh, was that always the ending? And then on a lighter note, is that Ryan Gosling's younger brother? <laughs> oh, I hate to repeat a joke, but yes, if that was Ryan Gosling's younger brother, which is funny. No. Um, but he's totally, I think he's really hot. Um, and was that always the ending? Yeah, I always knew that was going to be the ending. Um, I, I chose that ending mostly because I think, you know, I wanted to end on a crossroads, mostly because it, the film is so personal to me, and I, I haven't figured out everything yet. Um, I'm still figuring things out. Um, and, and so, yeah, I wanted to leave it there. Um, I wonder if you could talk, excuse me, talk about uh, withholding her internal uh, world, um, so we, cause we don't really know what a lot of the motivations are. I don't know if you could talk about how you came to that particular decision. You mean, like, uh, why we don't hear her talk about her thoughts? Right. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to, I certainly didn't want to do a voiceover or anything like that. And she's just, you know, she was just with the baby for a lot of it, so. You know, you don't usually spill your guts to like a baby. I was thinking a Nick with with him. And, uh huh. Like, yeah. No. I mean, I definitely made it a quiet film on purpose. Um, it was definitely intentional. Um, and uh, you know, I I liked sort of the the portrait aspect of it. That's also why there's not a lot of camera movement um, and a lot of still shots. Not a lot of coverage. So it doesn't switch back and forth during dialogue scenes. It's usually just a still frame. Um, and Part of that is just my aesthetic as a director and also as a, as a viewer of films, it's just what I'm drawn to. And part of it is that um, I, I think that a lot of her struggles are, are just internal and they wouldn't have been um, sort of uh, appropriate to, to talk, especially to, to the second guy, Kyle. Um, but part of it, I think, is, you know, part of my problem with that character and part of my problem with myself um, is uh, learning to sort of stand up for yourself and, and take charge and take action and not be so submissive. And I feel like, she, you know, she doesn't do, she doesn't take action at all until the very end of the film um, when she runs against the baby is the first time she ever makes a move. Um, so, yeah, I just want to think I'm answering it right. Yeah, is it named after the train, the Empire Builder? Yes, thanks so much for asking. Uh, both, yes. The name of the train that goes from Chicago to Montana is called the Empire Builder. Um, and then in addition, the, and the reason why the title card comes later in the film is because, you know, when she come, when she goes to Montana, I do feel like she's creating an empire, building a new world there. Yeah. Both by herself, you know, when she initially gets there, I feel like she finds the semblance of of independence on her own, and then you know when she meets Kyle, she they form almost like a pseudo marriage. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was just interesting that in the first marriage, well, the first relationship, her husband, her real husband, they pretty much it's similar to a pretty routine kind of thing where he's basically telling her what to do. And then she goes off on her own, is getting independent, and then she gets into this other relationship with Kyle. Then pretty soon they're in a routine, and he's telling her what to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and I think that that happens to me, and I think that happens to a lot of people where we sort of like uh, 
we almost like fulfill our own destiny, you know. Uh, and and I think she she's so happy to leave Chicago and to leave uh, <coughs> her husband and to sort of find that space that she does find. I mean, I'm really satisfied when she gets to Montana and she's cleaning and she's chopping wood and stuff. It's great, and it's, for me sometimes it's it's a fantasy to to escape my problems. And I just think maybe if I'm in a new environment. Um, then I'll find myself, or I'll be able, be, able, be braver, or I'll be you know more productive, um, and and then of course she she meets this guy who at first you know I think he's like super attractive and he's like you know manly and working on the land and stuff and and I my hope as the as the filmmaker was that the audience would be like yeah go for it kind of you know um, and then. She just gets in the same routine, yeah. And I think, and that's when the movie becomes really scary to me, um, is that she's sort of re really vulnerable. She's it's it's cyclical, it's yeah. Really um, and then that guy's even like scarier in a way. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Can you talk a little bit about the interactions uh, with the baby in the film and sort of how? wanted him to appear, I don't know, like that sort of triangle between them, the new guy, and how oh. he treats her kid, and how he like kind of steps in as a father. Right, yeah, that. so, I mean, basically, I just wanted him, I wanted him to be kind of scary, and, um, but slowly get to that point, and I do think, you know, when he's trying to teach the baby how to walk, he's just like too aggressive, and if you know anything about babies, or if you're a mother, you know that that baby just wasn't ready to walk, and it was just, he wasn't, you know, hitting anyone, but it was so, it was just a, sort of violent, the way he was acting was sort of violent. Um, and then when he was saying, uh, telling her to, you know, let the baby cry, that was like another thing, and then, yeah, so, um, yeah, that would be your question about the baby, yeah. And he was only 10 months old at the time, so he was, um, now he's, he'll be two next month, actually, but, um, so he was really easy to work with. Um, <laughs> <Good acting. laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I think he was really good at acting just like a baby. <laughs> um, but you know, every once in a while he would look at the camera. But besides that, he was he didn't mind eating over and over again in the scene. <laughs> I think he was a little confused why we had to run, like why he was naked running through a field over and over again. But he was okay. Um, but just to talk a little bit about <clears throat> uh, bringing it back to why this is such a personal film. Um, last. July, I shot this last September and October, and the July, a few months before I shot it, um, my business, I had a small business here in Chicago, got shut down by the state of Illinois. It was uh, really dramatic and sad. Um, and, and so I ended up sort of inadvertently becoming a stay-at-home mom. Um, and it wasn't something that I intended to do. Um, in fact, when I was pregnant, my husband and I talked about sort of him being the one that stayed home because his, his schedule was a little bit more flexible. Um, and then when that happened, I sort of, I had like an identity crisis um, about sort of what what I was doing and, and what that meant for me um, as a woman and as a mother. Um, and then of course I was racked with guilt because I didn't want to feel bad about not wanting to stay home. Um, I, I love my kid, but I also didn't want to be with him all day. And so I'm still sort of struggling with that stuff. but. Um, but that's what I was going through at the time when I made the film. Had you made a film before this? Yeah, I made a feature in 2009 called It Was Great But I Was Ready to Come Home. About two, um, It's a film about female friendship and it's about two best friends that travel to Costa Rica together. That's what we did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys might really like that. Yeah. <laughs> Did those characters talk in that movie? Did those characters talk in that movie? There, I don't know if that's an insult or just a nice question. Um, uh, they talk, yeah, they talk a little bit more. I'd say it's a little bit more. Because we did talk. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, any more questions? Yeah. Did you do your own editing? Like some of the pacing was so interesting. Like when the train comes to the station, it just seemed... I don't want to say slow, but you were definitely saying a move that way. Yeah, I mean, it was. It is a slow film, but it's it's intentionally. I would call it intentionally paced. 
<laughs> That's a nice way to, that I would say. It. Um, but yeah, it is. It is slow. It is quiet. And and yeah, I, I try and set the scene very early that that's kind of what you're in for. Um, but yeah, I mean, I love watching the train arrive slowly um, the whole time. You know, I think it's kind of amazing. But um, you know, I didn't edit it myself. Sorry. No, I had an, an editor, uh, David Lowry, who who went with me, and we had a really small crew. Only six of us went to Montana, so including the actors um, and everybody. Yes. Would you mind saying more exactly where this was in Montana? No, it was in West Glacier, Montana, right outside of Glacier National Park. Yes. Okay. Realistically, like when she left, and she didn't have the beat em up, no stroller, no baby yeah. carriage, and for a whole week, one little bag. That was yeah. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but it's sort of it's a little surreal. <laughs> here's the yeah. here's the take a leap of faith. <laughs> she was really traveling light. She really was. She yes. Was the idea, you know, what what just the mind of you is that the idea is that her her husband. Well, I mean, do you remember in the car? Her husband's like, are you sure you don't want the stroller? You know, and she's like, no. I think she was just like totally rejecting it. You know, she was just like, no, let me do it myself, and I can do it simple, and and I I don't need anything. Um, but you got there, I'm like. Yeah, I think she just wanted to be free. You know, but she didn't leave her kid. I mean, she and that's what I was going through at the time. And so I wanted to be free of sort of that domesticity. Like I, I didn't. I, even still, you know, I'm, I'm a full-time mom. I still like stay home. Still, and and when I'm cleaning the bathroom or something, I'm sort of like. Oh, I'm just cleaning the bathroom. Of course, I'm cleaning the bathroom because it's dirty. And then, you know, sometimes I'll be like, oh, I'm like a mom and I'm a woman and my husband's at work and I'm cleaning a bathroom. And this is just not what I, you know, when you know, when I looked at my parents when I was a teenager or you know, when I'm a woman, I thought, no, I'm gonna marry someone who's like shares in all of these chores and helps me cook dinner every night and makes the baby's doctor's appointments and all of that stuff. And, and, I didn't do that. I married, I married someone that I'm very much in love with, but who's like, you know, kind of clueless in that stuff. So, so it's, you know, sometimes I'm just, I don't know. Sometimes I get really confused, and I and I have sort of a crisis like this. <laughs> yeah, that was what was good because I think most women go through that. And Thank you. When the baby. Thank you. Yeah. I didn't know that anyone went through this. It was, I know. <laughs> it's nice to hear you say. Why did you continue to call the baby baby? Oh, I just wanted, well, because I really wanted him to almost be like a archetype of a baby, not so much of a... But he has so much personality, he yeah. very much. I couldn't, I couldn't subdue him. He was just... <laughs> <laughs> He's such a personality. We have time for one more question. Who's got the best one? Okay. Why did you um, run away at the end instead of telling Kyle to go away to exist? To kind of assert yourself, it seemed like you continued the the um, self-defeating behavior of running away instead of asserting yourself and telling him to go away and right. have your space. Yeah, you're, are you talking about when she goes to get the baby? Right, when she goes to get the baby, and then she's leaving. And she's then running she's running away, away again. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, and I think she just like um, I think that when she was in a weird position again, she felt restricted, things were scary, and her instinct was to run away again. And then instead of instead of me as the director allowing her to totally do that, I, I made her face her husband again, um, which was sort of the first thing that she ran away with. And, and of course, I just leave it there. But my hope is that, um, and this is also my hope for myself, you know, when I have these moments, is that I hope that she she doesn't just keep running away, but she makes she makes a change. So instead of just being submissive throughout the whole film, I hope that she she takes action because, you know, yeah, I hope she just learns to to make a change within herself to be more assertive and to to fix the situation. Yeah, instead of running away from it. So that's why I did that. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much.